Hello, my name is Claire, and I'll be sharing my NCERQSRI research project on the heat stress response in Saccharomyces cerevisiae as a model to study fundamental exosome biology, which I conducted in the summer of 2020, supervised by Dr. Christopher Brett. Before we go into the specifics of this project, I'm going to introduce two topics. The first being how exosomes mediate communication, and the second being cell protein homeostasis. Exosomes are vesicles released by cells that allow communication with their neighbors, either within the same tissue or between organs. In order for these cells to properly coordinate many complex functions, they need to communicate with one another, and exosomes are critical in this. They carry bioactive protein and RNA molecules from a donor cell that serve as messengers that drive a specific response in recipient cells following their uptake. These vesicles are implicated in human physiology as well as numerous human diseases, such as neurodegeneration and cancer. But this field is new, so their biology is still quite unknown. Therefore, the aim of this project was to take advantage of the conservation between human and yeast to elucidate the fundamental molecular machinery underlying exosome biology. Yeast cells share similarities with human cells, with many proteins performing the same function between species, which is referred to as orthology. We know that both human and yeast release vesicles, exosomes, and these vesicles contain common protein cargos known as molecular chaperones, including heat shock proteins, in particular, the HSP70 and HSP90 families. These molecular chaperones are important for maintaining cell protein homeostasis. They fold proteins into their functional conformations and prevent toxic aggregates. An imbalance in this process, which can be induced by cell stress, such as high external temperatures, leads to the accumulation of toxic proteins and programmed cell death. In order to counter this, cells undergo the heat stress response, where chaperones are upregulated in order to promote cell survival. Therefore, because the role of exosomes in this heat stress response is unknown, we reason that we could use yeast, again, taking advantage of similarities to understand their role by looking at their fundamental exosome biology and protein homeostasis. To study this, we developed a new experimental paradigm to upregulate molecular chaperone production, as well as exosome communication. It involves subjecting a yeast culture to a sublethal heat stress at 42 degrees, followed by a rest period, and finally a lethal heat stress at 50 degrees. During the period referred to as thermal tolerance conditioning at 42 degrees, molecular chaperones are induced and should therefore protect cells from the subsequent lethal heat stress. Therefore, we hypothesize that conditioning our cells in this way will increase their survival rate compared to a lethal heat stress alone. This is in fact what we observed. By determining the proportion of live gray cells to dead methylene blue positive cells, shown here, I found that cells that underwent thermotolerance conditioning, the dark gray bar survived significantly more than naive cells, the black bar. What's more is I found that the supernatant from these conditioned cells also induced increased survival, seen in the burgundy bar. This indicates that something released by cells into the extracellular medium is responsible for this protection against lethal heat stress. To show that this factor was exosomes, I conducted a similar experiment. I conditioned a yeast culture at 42 degrees again, then isolated the exosomes released from cells. I found that these conditioned exosomes protected naive cells from lethal heat stress, seen in the red bar, significantly more than the naive cells that did not receive exosomes, the black bar. This suggested inducing exosomes release and chaperone production through conditioning promotes cell survival against lethal heat stress. I also found that this effect was dose dependent with more exosomes conferring greater protection. This suggests increased exosome uptake correlates with increased cell survival by promoting proteostasis. Next, we wanted to confirm that chaperones were responsible for the protective effect. To do this, we took yeast cells and deleted one of their molecular chaperone genes, either SSA2 or HSC82, which means that cells no longer produce this protective protein and therefore their exosomes no longer contain the heat shock protein. And as we expected, deleting molecular chaperones leads to no protection against lethal heat stress. This means that exosomal heat shock proteins are critical for proteostasis and therefore protection against lethal heat stress. Now we wanted to verify that our critical molecular chaperones were being loaded into the protective exosomes. So I started by imaging live cells expressing fluorescent heat shock proteins, SSA2 and HSC82, 
which had also been stained with FM-464, which labels the endocytic machinery. The endocytic machinery is just where exosomes are made within the cell. I found that when I conditioned cells at 42 degrees, chaperones aggregated and co-localized with the endocytic machinery, which suggests that conditioning localizes chaperones within exosomes. I further validated this in two ways. The first was by measuring the fluorescence of exosomes to show that green fluorescent protein conjugated heat shock proteins were inside. I excited the vesicles at a wavelength of 470 nanometers, which caused the fluorescent GFP tag to emit 510 nanometer light, which can be detected as seen in the graph on the right. Here, BRO1 is a marker for yeast exosomes. Then I used a technique for protein detection called Western blotting. Proteins are separated based on size, then probed using antibodies. The black bands seen in the whole cell and exosome fractions confirm that molecular chaperones are present. So altogether, we saw that yeast cells, just like human cells, communicate between one another using exosomes. Molecular chaperones that promote cell survival are loaded into these exosomes and confer thermal tolerance protection to recipient cells. Basically, when a yeast cell takes up exosomes that contain chaperones, they help to refold proteins and clear toxic aggregates that help that cell to survive. These findings implicate yeast exosomes in cellular proteostasis and highlight similarities between yeast and human exosome biology. Going forward, we can use our findings to better understand the role of exosomes in human disease, including neurodegeneration. We know that neuronal cell death is caused by toxic protein accumulation and that exosomes, which contain chaperones, spread these aggregates. In cancer, exosomes facilitate cancer adaptation and are known to carry chaperones with altered functionality. This means that we can use yeast as a model to better understand how fundamental exosome biology works in normal cells as a first step to understand how these processes go wrong in pathogenic disease-causing exosomes. I'd like to thank my supervisor, Dr. Brett, as well as the members of the Brett Lab, Concordia's CMCI, as well as the as well as NSERC, FRQNT, and Concordia for funding this project. Thank you.